Programming is a skill best acquired by practice and example rather than from books. Logical operators and if-else statements. Logical operators are used to combine conditional statements. The three logical operators we're going to be looking at are the and, the or, and the not. We'll start with the and logical operator, and that basically returns true if both statements are true. And the or returns true if one of the statements is true. The not just reverses the result and returns false if the statement is true. So the if-else statement is a decision-making statement. It determines if a certain block of codes will be executed or not. An example of an if-else an else code block includes if weather equal equal raining. So if we have a variable that's weather and that variable is initially set to a value like raining, for example, we're saying that if it is equal to raining, it will print a message saying, wear a raincoat and open an umbrella. Elif, which means else if, the weather is equal equal to snowing. So if the variable has a different value, and that value is equal to snowing, then it's going to print another message and it's going to say, wear my warm coat, gloves, and snow boots. And then else, of course, if it's neither of the two, that means neither raining or snowing, then it's going to print saying, dress as usual. So you can see that we're making use of the if, elif, else statement here. We haven't necessarily added the and or the or. But we will see an example where we will add these logical operators to our if statements and how they actually work. This is just a syntax to explain to you how an if conditional statement works in Python programming. Now here's a code. In the first line, we're printing a statement saying, how's the weather today? And then we're creating a variable in the second line called weather and of course assigning a data type of string and an input keyword so the user can be able to enter the response. Now, based on what the user enters as a response, we're making the program recognize if the weather response is equal to cloudy, or you can see me use that logical operator or there. So we're saying if the weather equal equal cloudy, that means if the user enters cloudy or the weather equals rainy, then we're printing a message saying, bring an umbrella, you will need it all day. Elif, which means else if, the weather equal equals sunny or the weather equal equal windy, then it's going to print bring sunglasses. So we're saying if they enter a response saying sunny or windy, then the response that's going to be printed would be bring sunglasses. Elif, if the weather is not, and you see me using that not, even though in this example there is no and, if there was an and, it just means that there's going to be two statements that have to be true, but we can't use just one variable with and. So we can't say if weather equal equal cloudy and weather equal equal rainy, because it can be possible that you have two different values for one variable. If we had two different variables, for example, weather and something else, then we can use that and uh, logical operator. So here in the last statement, we're saying elif weather is not in cloudy, rainy, sunny, or windy. So you notice that I'm using this not logical operator, and I'm also using a list there to basically tell the compiler that if the weather response that is being entered by the user does not involve a response which says cloudy, rainy, sunny, or windy, then it's just going to print something saying don't bring anything. So if they enter anything else other than cloudy, rainy, or sunny, or windy, then it's just going to respond saying don't bring anything. Now when this program is run, you can see the run output on the right side. You can see that it's asking how's the weather, and then the response is sunny. And so because the response is sunny, it's going to execute the second statement, which is the one on line 5 that would say bring sunglasses, right? And then the question is being, the program's being run again, so the question's being posed again, but this time the response is cloudy, so hence it's giving the first response, which is bring an umbrella, you will need it all day. And then the program is run for the third time, but this time it's just, you know, returning this response from the user as dull, so it says how's the weather today, and it's just dull. So dull is not in the list of cloudy, rainy, sunny, or windy. And if you look at line seven, we said if it's not in that list, all it's going to say is don't bring anything. So that's what's happening on the output. Now we're looking at the loop structures. We're going to look at the for and the while loop. So there are the two different loop structures that we use in Python programming language. 
We're using the for, we're going to be looking at the for loop structure, which is used when a code block needs to run for a specific amount of time. So if you want to run something in your code for a specific amount of time, you know how many times you want to run that thing, then the best loop structure for you to use is the for loop. However, if you want to repeat a code block for, you know, endless amount of times, as long as a condition is true, then the best loop structure to use in that case is a while loop. So a while loop structure is just to repeat a block of code as long as a condition is true, but a for loop structure is basically used to repeat a block of code for a certain number of times. So it's more specific. Here in an example, we can see the for loop syntax. And here we can see that we're creating this list called fruits. And inside of the list, we're having coconut, mango, and banana. But we're having this for loop that goes through every single item in the list and basically just prints out the item. You can see that after we create that list, we're seeing for. So the way we write the for loop in Python is we write the keyword for, then we put a variable, and then we'll put in, for example, in this case, because we're dealing with a list. Normally, we can also say for i in range three. That is like when you want to repeat something for three times, like repeat a block of code three times, or if you say for A in range of four. So that's kind of just how it works. But here we're using the for loop because we want to go through all the items in a list. So we're saying for I in fruits, but I can say for something else. I don't have to say I, you can use any other variable. And then we're printing this response saying, I like I. So I is going to represent the element inside of the list, whatever element it's going through. So in this case, it will start with, I like coconut. Because remember what I said, in a list, we always have the index position that starts at zero. So the first item, and then it just falls from there. So here's going to print, I like coconut. I like mango. I like banana. So that I is representing the items that are in the list. Not the index position, but the items themselves. If I wanted to find the index position of any item in that list, remember what I have to do is I have to write the name of the list, dot index, and then put the item in closing quotation mark. And then if I print that out, it's just going to return for me the index position of the item in that list. Now let's look at the while loop syntax and let's compare it with the for loop syntax that we just saw. In the while loop syntax, you can see that we have a equals zero. So it starts with assigning a value to a variable. And this variable is a, and we say while a is less than four. So what we're saying is that it's starting at zero, as long as it's less than four, print a, and then we have a plus equal one, which is a shorthand of writing a equals to a plus one. So it's just a shorter way of saying a equals to a plus one. You can also write that one and it's still gonna be correct. So what we're saying with the while loop and the difference you can see here is that the while loop is just going to keep repeating until as long as a condition is true. So as long as a is always less than four, it's just going to print a. So it's going to start with zero and it's going to check. Is zero less than four? Yes, it is. Print zero. And then add plus one. Now a is going to be plus one. So zero plus one is one. So now it's going to go back. Okay, is one less than four? Okay, print a. So print one. And then one plus one equals two. And it's going to go back. And it's going to keep going back until it gets to three. Because once it gets to three, it prints out the three. Then three plus one is four. And so it goes back to the condition and says, okay, while a is less than four, is three less than four? No. So it doesn't print anything anymore and it stops. So here we can see that the while loop, even though it looks like you're just repeating it for a certain amount of times, but really the while loop is just there whenever you want to repeat something uh, as long as a condition is true. So it's like you're telling somebody, are you ready to start? Yes. So as long as the person says yes, then, you know, process is going to start or the process is going to happen. Once the person, person says no, then the whole thing stops. And so that's like how the while loop works. Now here's a code and an output together of the use of the for and the while loop. And here we can see, as I said, there is a variable on line one that is called start. And that variable has a value of yes. So that means start equals yes. And you can see yes in closing quotation marks. Now on line two, it says while start equal equal yes. That means we're using the while statement, the while loop, sorry. And so we're saying as long as start is equal equal to yes, then we want to do that whole thing inside of the while block. And what is inside of the while block? We have print. You will be asked two questions. Print, please take your time to answer them. And then we have a for loop again. But now because we know we want to ask two questions, so we have a specific amount of times that we want to repeat something, like I said before. So we're using a for loop to do that. And this time we're saying for questions in range, as I've said to you before. But here we're saying from one to three. So you're going to think, oh, but it's going to run three times while we said two. And the thing about computing and the thing about compiler is that once you have a range, it doesn't count the last number. So essentially, it's just going to run one and two. So it's not going to count three. 
And so here we're saying inside of the for loop, we're using that if else statement and we're saying if question. And remember, question is the variable for the for loop that's just going to go through these numbers from one to two without counting three because we have that range keyword. So it doesn't count the last number. So we're saying if the question equal equal one, if it starts at one, then we ask the first question and we're creating this variable called question one. And we're using the string data type, of course, to ask this question of what is your favorite travel destination? Now, if the question equal equal two, so if it's the second question, we're asking the question of what is your favorite food? So that's having a, you know, that's going to be stored under this variable of question two. Now, after these two questions, we're changing the state of the start variable, because if not, this is just going to keep running because we said, well, start equals yes. And start is yes, because we started, you know, at the beginning, start, start equals yes. So once they finish the two questions, we're now changing the state of start from yes to no. So that means it's going to stop running. So here we can see on line 10, start is gone back equal to no now. So, and then after it goes equal to no, of course, it's not going to keep running the loop. It's going to stop. So it's going to print this message saying, thank you for answering all the questions. Now you can see at the bottom, when this program is run, you will see it running by saying, you will be asked two questions. And again, we have this, please take your time to answer. And then after it says, what is your favorite travel destination? The response is Morocco. What is your favorite food? The response is chicken tagine. And then afterwards, it just says, thank you for answering all the questions. So because the start variable changes the state from yes to no, so the while loop doesn't continue running because the condition is no, no longer true. So that's just an example of how we can implement the for and the while loops in Python programming language.